Hi there, welcome to the Media Solutions stage. I'm Martin Lindsay, product manager of our wireless and workflow solutions, along with Cecil Wong, sustaining engineer with Sony. Today we're going to talk to you about our cloud-based ENG solutions, as well as the entire workflow. So it really is more than just ENG. It's about quick and easy distribution and fast uh, time to air with your content. I'd like to start off by discussing our camcorders. Our camcorders have built-in wireless technology, and that basically allows you to connect your phone uh, to the camcorder to control it, to do settings, as well as do FTP transfers, as well as do storyboard edits, and then execute that storyboard push uh, via remote connection um, via FTP. We also have uh, connectivity on the wireless camcorders via a Wi-Fi connection or an LTE connection, cellular connection, uh, or a hardwired RJ45 connection. As long as you get internet connectivity, you have ability to send files and media and live streaming uh, content back to your facility. I'd also like to introduce our new PXWZ190 and our PXWZ280 4K camcorders. These camcorders have the ability to do dual link connectivity. And those are available uh, to see at our uh, camera set just over here. I'd also like to introduce or show you our CBK WA100 adapter. This adapter will allow you to take any legacy cameras or any non-streaming camcorder devices or non-wireless connected devices to become a trans, uh, wireless transmission device. Basically, this will accept an SDI input and it will have uh, an, an SD card here that will let you do a proxy record of the content and it has connections, two USB connections that will let you connect dual link back to the internet. That could be Wi-Fi and cellular, or cellular and cellular. That gives you a secure connection to get your content back. Now this does live streaming over six megabits per second, or you can also do FTP file transfers as well. We also have a CBKWA101, which is very similar to this, except it side mounts directly to some of our camcorders, such as a PMW400 and a PXWX320, essentially turning those camcorders into wireless streaming devices. So, Having the ability to have the encoding and the transfer directly in the camcorder really eliminates the need for a third party transmission device. This means you don't need an uh, extra backpack, you don't need the additional batteries with that, and you don't need the wires with it. We can now do dual link streaming directly from the camcorder without any additional hardware. This is a big benefit. It also allows you to have more uh, devices stream back to the station because every one of your photographers out in the field who have a Sony camcorder have the ability to stream back to the station and also transfer files back to the station, not just those who are equipped with a backpack. We also have tight integration with metadata, workflow, metadata workflows in order to get metadata pushed out from the newsroom computer system to your camcorder, which we'll talk about uh, coming up soon. So, in a nutshell, this is actually camera. We have our acquisition devices, such as our camcorders and our wireless adapter. We also have a mobile app that you can send uh, live video to uh, your, your um, station. We have a PWS 110RX1 receiver, which resides at your, your station. And that will accept the live QoS streams and output them as SDI. We also have cloud management that manages these streams and manages the files as well. We also have integration with newsroom computer systems, ingest in MAM, as well as the ability to post and stream to social media. So we talked about dual link connectivity being built into some of the newer camcorders, as well as being able to do that now from our CBKWA100 device. This allows you to stream uh, your, this allows you to stream your video over two connections. That could be two uh, cellular connections, it could be a cellular connection plus a Wi-Fi connection, and the data is aggregated equally among both of them. As uh, one of those connections becomes uh, less secure or becomes um, uh, compromised, the signal will balance higher on the second stream. So basically it's aggregating and balancing the data among both of those um, connections. So that's a big bonus in terms of now you have the ability to not only connect to one carrier as an example such as Verizon, you can use Verizon and ATT as an example simultaneously at the same time. Uh, this is XCAM Pocket. This is a free mobile app that can be installed on Android or iOS devices. This allows you to uh, stream the same high quality uh, QoS video that we stream from our camcorders from your phone back to the station. 
And this essentially allows you to get to the scene of a story first um, before per perhaps your photographer shows up and start streaming that story right away. That's a big benefit. Your, your talent might show up and, uh, and be at the scene first and they can start streaming immediately right away, regardless of where they, where they are in the world, as long as they have connection to the internet. So we'd also ha we also have multi-point distribution. What this does is this allows you to stream from a single camcorder to multiple stations at, at the same time. So you may have a photographer who's in a hurricane, at the scene of a hurricane, and the first station takes that to air. Affiliate stations may want to later join into that on air, that live stream. They have the ability to connect via our cloud service, XTCam Air, and join into that stream and start streaming that to their local stations as well. So we can have our main station accept that stream, and then multiple affiliate stations also stream the same content, all from one camcorder. So we're going to talk about live streaming control now, and we're going to show you our, our uh, GUI here. This is basically HTML5. You basically log in on a Chrome browser, just like you would email. We're going to sign into our account here at Cecil Will. And this is going to bring us up to our live cameras. And this is, what's going, to, this is going to show us our transmission devices and also our receivers. So our transmission devices are our camcorders located throughout the world. We have some here from Japan. Um, we also have some on the camera set. And we also have one here called our stage camera. It's the Stage PXWX200. These thumbnails update every few seconds to give you an idea of what's going on in the field. Then you have the option to drag and drop into your receiver to start that stream. So we have multiple receivers here. There's a receiver in Japan. There's a receiver at NAB, which is at our desk over here. And we also have a social media receiver. This is a virtual receiver in the cloud. We can drag a stream into our social media receiver, and that will stream directly to YouTube Live or YouTube or, and uh, Facebook Live. We also have the statistics here. It shows us the ability to see our uh, bit rate, our streaming bit rate. We also have the ability to adjust the bit rates, stop the stream as well. We see a preview, a live preview, and also uh, audio. So there's two channels of audio that are streamed live as well. So we're going to talk about integration with the newsroom computer system. And what this basically allows us to do is take story names from the newsroom and publish it to the camcorder. So those names are loaded in the camcorder, and the media is recorded based on that naming convention. So this is an example of a user and computer system. We work with uh, most of the major uh, NRCSs, such as ENPS, iNews, and Open Media. We're going to give you an example of ENPS here, and Cecil's going to create a new story. So this is what a news writer would do in a news facility. They start by creating a story name, and we're going to call it XDCAM underscore air. And as soon as that's created, we go to our planning page in XDCAM Air, and we will see that show up here. So it communicates via MOS protocol from the ENPS system to XDCAM Air. So as soon as the news writer entered that, that showed up here. Now we have the ability to take that metadata, that story name called XDCAM Air, and drag that into one of our cameras or all of our cameras. Or we can drag multiple uh, metadata story names down to multiple camcorders or single camcorders. So what Cecil done here is he's taking XTCAM Air, he's going to assign it to our camera here, our PXW X200. We're going to call up, he's going to assign it. So now the metadata is being pushed to our camcorder right here. Our camcorder is connected via LTE. So after he assigns it, what we're going to do is we're going to see uh, a viewfinder shot on the other monitor here. So this is a, a viewfinder of our X200 here. And you can see the story name up here is uh, TV4. That's the current loaded story name. What we're going to do is call into the camera, so he has the ability right now to look at the metadata in the camera and load the story that we just pushed called XDCAM Air. It's going to do a drop down and click load, and you'll see XDCAM Air load up here. So now you see XDCAM Air. And that camera, that is this camera here, that is, um, can be anywhere, connected anywhere in the world again. So it's an LTE connection. So within a couple of minutes, we've, or under a minute, we've been able to create a story name publish that metadata to the camera, and now the camera photographer can go and shoot that story. Again, the camera photographer also has the ability to adjust the metadata stories that are pushed to the camcorder, so if they're finished with this story, they can also manually choose a different metadata story. This saves the camera person from having to enter the metadata. It also saves them from having to go and rename all the files after the media is captured. So basically what happens now is when all the media is captured, it's named based on XDCAM Air, that's 001 is the first file, 002 is the second file, 003 is the third file, et cetera, et cetera. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to show you the auto proxy push um, from the camcorder. So the camcorders do simultaneous record of high res as well as an SD card uh, record of proxy files. The proxy files are fairly high resolution. They can be set up to nine megabits per second. And these will allow you to uh, automatically push the proxy once a record is finished. So we're going to do a record here quickly. We'll do a five second record. One, two, three, four, five. And we stop the record. What the camera is doing now is it's connecting uh, to XD camera or it's pushing a file. And this can be done via FTP to a receiver of your choice, uh, FTP receiver of your choice, or it can go to XD camera up here. So we're pushing the file up right now and it's going to populate under our asset tab. So we, we go to the asset tab. We will see, our, there's our file there. It just got uploaded, and now it's going to generate the thumbnail. XDCAM Air 001, that's the metadata we created. That's the file that we just created. And there's our, and there's our clip. So now we've got the clip up to the cloud in about a minute. What we can do is we can create a storyboard. So we'll create a quick storyboard here, a new storyboard. We'll call it XDCAM Air. And on, with that storyboard, we can then bring in not only the clips from this camera, but clips from other cameras as well. So any cameras that are pushing content up to the cloud, we have access up in the XD Cam Air to bring into a storyboard. So we've created a new storyboard, and we can bring multiple files into the storyboard. We could do trim on the storyboard, and we also do watermarks as well. Once we're done creating a storyboard, we drag a bunch of clips in. So we've, our first clip is the record that we just did now, XD Cam Air 001. We've brought other clips in that were shot earlier in the day. We then have the ability to go and publish to social media or create a file that can be used for our website. So CISO's gonna go here, click on export, and here you can see on the settings that can be chosen for your website, or we can also publish. If we select publish, we can publish to YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and you can publish to all of those at the same time. So all in a matter of about two minutes, we've recorded a file We've pushed the file up to the cloud, we've done a storyboard edit, and we've published that to social media. So it just shows you how quickly the workflow can be done uh, with these, with these uh, workflows. So in addition to the, uh, um, uh, pushing the file to social media, again, we can publish the file to social media, and we can also stream directly to social media. And that, again, would be YouTube Live and uh, Facebook Live. So another neat inter integration we have is with Adobe Premiere. So with Adobe Premiere, Cecil's going to call up our Premiere uh, uh, workstation here, and we have a plug in here for XD Cam Air. So he's going to sign in, as you would, on the typical HTML5 uh, browser, the same way you would. This is a plug in directly in Premiere. So this allows us to get access to all our assets that have been pushed up to the cloud directly from within Premiere. So we can take the clips, such as XD Cam Air 001 that we just created, and we can basically put that directly into our bin. It's going to download from the cloud right now, and then you can start editing right away. So the beauty with this is you have access to all your camcorders directly within your editor. You can bring the proxies in, and usually a 9 megabit per second proxy is enough to take to air. We have a lot of TV stations who use a 9 meg MP4 proxy file and use that right away uh, to get it on air quickly, because fast and first is obviously most important for news. We then have the ability to conform later if the high res is pushed back from the camcorder. We can conform with the low res for a higher res um, output later in the day. So we're going to show the remote browse and push the files as well. So if you don't want to set your camera up to do auto proxy pushes, what we can do is we can go into the files tab and we can actually reach into the media of the camera itself. So this camera again could be anywhere in the world, whether it be in Japan, whether it be here with us now. We're now looking at the media right on this, this camera, our X200 here, and we can cherry pick what we want to send back to either uh, our FTP site at our facility or back to XD Cam Air. So we would click on this clip as an example here, we would do a transfer, and then it would transfer that to our assets page or again back to our FTP site back at the station. Uh, we also have the remote control capability, and we're going to show you a uh, connection to one of our cameras in uh, Japan. So we have a PXWX400 in Japan, and we have the option for a remote tab here. Under the remote tab, you can do, do zoom, focus, gain, and iris control. 
all directly and remotely from the, uh, the browser itself. This is very powerful, powerful especially for uh, junior photographers where you may want to do setup Six of their, uh, their cameras zero. remotely. The number of championship rings we have? We also have GPS map view, and GPS map view will basically show you where all your camcorders are or where they were last connected. This is really good for assignment desks and news departments to determine where to send their photographers to a breaking news story. So if, they're, if they have a breaking news story in the west end of the city, they want to find out where their photographers are, who's closest to that story, they can basically deploy that person to go shoot that story. So here's our, our camera in Japan. We have a PXWX400. When you click on that, it shows you uh, it shows you that camera name or the person or the photographer's name. We can also zoom out and we could some and we could see the cameras that we have at uh, at the Las Vegas Convention Center here at NAB. Um, in addition, we also have coming this uh, this summer the ability to communicate via IFB. So we'll be able to send audio to the camcorder directly uh, from the station. You would plug into the camcorder and you'd be able to hear and communicate with the uh, back of back of the, the news station. So quickly, I just want to talk about the API integration with XD Camera. XD Camera is very flexible and open. We provide APIs to third-party vendors, and we also work with third-party uh, APIs as well. And this is shown already with our Adobe Premiere uh, integration with, with the plugin window that we have with Adobe Premiere. We also work with uh, third-party MAM and third-party production systems, as well as Media Backbone, our own Sony Media Backbone High production system. So something that we were working on as an R&D project right now is some AI. And what we want to do is show you some auto speech recognition. We got some clips here. And this gives us the ability to play back this clip well, we took a and do a, an, a, a, an audio transcription. We saw some, uh, some dirt and some sand blowing around, but nothing like so some of the stories. We can hear the text and it's being translated. And now what we can do is we can select certain spots of the text and it'll take us to that point of the video. Sure so if we click on and, and or anywhere in the text there, oh, and we saw some it'll take us back to that point of the video. We can pause it and we click the different sections, it'll take us to that time code of that video. Very powerful. We can also do a search up at the top left here. So we can do a search for the, T-H-E. And it shows us all the thes and all the time code marks in here where there's a the for all the different media that we have in this folder. So then we can click on one of those thes and it takes us to exactly that time code point. This is very powerful in the fact that uh, we'll be able to get media up to the cloud, we'll be able to do auto speech recognition, and then you'll be able to search based on text rather than having to go through and scrub through the video to find certain areas of, uh, of audio. So that's pretty neat, and we're pretty proud of that. Pretty proud of that. So uh, we thank you, for, thank you for joining us today, and uh, encourage you to see our PXW Z190 and our PXW Z280 cameras, our new 4K camcorders, they're over the camera set. If you have any questions in terms of the streaming or the workflows or the questions on the cameras, uh, we'd be happy to help you. We have a team of experts just on my right over here. We'd love to uh, work with you and answer your questions. Thank you.